Hey, thanks for tuning into this video. Just want to show you guys uh, uh, my control board that we designed for the ICOM 705 here. Um, you can see I got my 705 up and going. And uh, if we look at the side here, there's something a little bit unique about this one. Um, instead of the micro USB port, we have the USB type C port on it here. So um, we'll demonstrate it uh, working, communicating with the computer here, and then we'll actually uh, take the radio apart. We'll show you how to install the board. So um, what we're going to do is first off, just take our USB-C cable and we're going to plug it into the radio here. And it is reversible, obviously, being USB-C. But uh, before I plug it in the laptop, uh, we're going to run a command called LSUSB. I want you to bring the camera over here. Um, and right now, if we just do a search for uh, anything with the um, 705, obviously, you don't get anything since it's not plugged in yet. But we go ahead and plug in our uh, radio to the ICOM. We can see that it does, in fact, show up. And uh, you can use it in your favorite programs like uh, WJSTX to run FT8, FT4, uh, along with other, all the other modes. Uh, obviously, it works on Mac, Linux, Windows. It doesn't really matter. It's USB, so it's going to work. We can see here, um, again, I'll reverse the cable just to kind of prove that it's still working here, even on the other side. And, yep, it's still showing up. So, um said so that uh, verifies the data transfer and it does actually charge the radio um, with the same five volts so if we power it off here um, so let's see. it's not charging it right now oh never mind there it goes so once powered off it does charge the radio at five volts computer's probably just not supplying with enough with, with enough power right now but it doesn't charge any faster with the USB-C. It still charges at the same speed as the USB micro B. So um, let's go ahead and uh, um, get set up, get this thing taken apart, and show you how to put the new control board into the radio. So, All right, so we're ready to take the radio apart here. Um, we got uh, the original board out of my radio and then our replacement board. So Frank, why don't you come on up here, and uh, we will just kind of go over the difference. So um, I'm pretty similar well exact same form factor it's literally just a drop-in replacement for the original board here um, obviously the big difference is that we got the type c port on the new one versus the old one is that micro b connector um, but what's actually kind of neat is that on this uh, type c connector um, it you don't have to do any modifications to the radio itself the housing is uh, big enough to handle that connector so um, all you have to do is literally just drop this in and we're off to the races. Um, the other big thing that we uh, did um, on this radio or on this control board is um, we kind of added some protection to the amplifier line. So the reason we went through and uh, created this board is because I was actually trying to hook up an external amplifier to this thing with the send line with a little cable that looks like this that goes from like the 3.5 millimeter jack to just your standard R RCA connector and the particular type of amplifier I have and I think this is pretty common talking to some of my other radio buddies is um, the way that works is that the amplifier that control line on it's on the sim line on the icon is that it stays high whether it's 5 volts or 12 volts most amplifiers are 12 volts and when you bring that line down to 0 volts um, by switching that line to ground, and that happens on this board here, is um, that allows the radio to start transmitting along with the amplifier, kind of keeps them both in sync. So the same thing happens when you press the PTT key, brings that line down, the radio knows to start transmitting, the amplifier knows to start transmitting, but it's also bi-directional line. So if you've got an amplifier where, for example, if you're on sending CW or Morse code, um, some people will hook up the um, their key to the amplifier instead of the radio. So then they'll do is uh, the amplifier will be telling the radio when to transmit. But um, what's kind of neat with that is that if you have it going that way, the radio you can still receive from the radio in between the DOS bits. I know a lot of people in the CW community like that ability to uh, be able to hear kind of in between transmitting. So, um, but like I said, the issue is is that on the original board, Frank, if you want to come back in here, 
Can't really get a super good shot of it, but we'll try. Um, let's see. Get some light on it. Um, okay, so right in here, in between these two guys here, are a pair of MOSFETs, or transistors, that are responsible for doing that switching. Well, the problem is, is that on the original control board, that is, uh, these guys cannot handle very much current. In fact, when I tested my uh, particular amplifier, it was only using about 30 milliamps of current. Um, but that was enough to fry these two guys here. So then all of a sudden my radio wouldn't transmit just because of uh, the issue with these two. So what we did on this one is uh, we upgraded them. Uh, they don't look too much different, and you probably can't tell here, but these two transistors took over the place of the original ones. And uh, where these guys got fried with just 30 milliamps, these can handle, uh, I think, up to an amp of sus sustained current, which is way more than you'd ever need for this particular line. So we definitely left a lot of headroom in there. We also did is add the, added the Zener diode here. And what that does is it kind of clamps down the voltage. So if you have a big voltage spike up, like when you're transmitting or keying the radio or something like that, um, this will let current through to kind of keep it below 16 volts. That way it doesn't go into the radio. Um, now, fortunately, the radio does have another diode upstream that protects it. Um, its reverse breakdown voltage is about 30 volts. So if you go, if for some reason that this fails, and as long as it stays under 30 volts, you'll be all right. But if you go above that, like if you start, if you threw a, for some reason, if you had like 120 volts, it'd get fried and it would send it to the radio and it would kill it. So I said, we try to add some extra protection there for you on that Zener, but uh, do be careful and make sure you're testing your amplifiers before you're connecting them. So, all right. Um, so yeah, nevertheless, let's go ahead and get started um, with the installation for this one. Again, it's really simple, really easy to do. In fact, I think there's only about nine screws to take apart all together. Um, so we'll hop right into it. Um, all you need is just a standard Phillips screwdriver. Um, just uh, make sure you try to find one that fits the screws so that way you don't strip them out. Um, but uh, first step, just make sure your radio is turned off. And what we're going to do is pop the battery out so there's no power in the radio. And then uh, we got two screws on the uh, top and bottom that we're going to do here. So go ahead and take those out. And one on the bottom here in between your uh, tripod mounts. Take that off. Now we got four screws on the back, so two on each side here and here. And uh, be careful as you're taking these off because this is what holds this kind of front panel on here. So I usually like to just hold the radio like this, so that way the radio is kind of facing down and you can kind of catch that screen as it comes off. You do have to be a little bit careful. There are a couple pair of ribbon cables that hold that display in place. Um, you do not have to take them off if you don't want to. Um, I'll show that here in a second. But uh, do keep in mind here. So, again, yeah, just take these off. All right, so now we got those four screws off here, and they are, um, you can look here that uh, they're, the ones on the top are different from the ones on the bottom, but that's pretty obvious to tell just due to the length. But uh, what we're going to do now is going to take the radio and kind of pull it apart like this. And you're going to do is kind of set the housing down to where it's kind of battery side down. And you're going to take the front of the radio and make it to where it's kind of the face or the bottom of the face goes to the ground. And these two ribbon cables can kind of just slide to the side right here. You can actually disconnect these if you want to. It doesn't harm anything. All you got to do is just uh, closer so you can see that. Um, all you have to do is just pull them out straight like this and they just pull straight back out. But there's not really a need, and they are a little bit fragile. So if you don't have to, if you feel comfortable that you don't have to disconnect them, then uh, you can just leave them in. And I'll go ahead and just uh, push them back in here. 
and they're just these are these particular ones are just friction mount so there's no bra braces or clips or anything like that in place but uh, next up here we have the uh, the actual board so again I have the, uh, the replacement board in here already but uh, to get the overview um, I have the replacement board in here already but it's going to be uh, um, sitting like uh, sitting like this um, like this it's going to be the original the original board's going to be sitting in here kind of like this with the connectors facing down and to the side. You have to be a little bit careful though because this ribbon cable kind of wraps underneath around like this. Um, so next step is, is just to take these three screws here out. So go ahead and do that. Now, if those three screws out, um, if you have like a plastic pry tool or if you just want to use your fingers, you can kind of just pop the board. Out like so. You're going to wrap it around like this. Now, there's this little uh, JTAG or ZIF connector, depending on the, uh, who you are. They call them a little bit different. But uh, get in on that a little bit, yeah. So on the the original one, sorry, um, the on the original one, the black piece is what you want to disconnect. So you can just I usually suggest your fingernail, just so that way you got these are very fragile, so you don't want to put too much pressure on them. But you just lift up like that, and that's going to kind of release that. Um, that connector uh, on the replacement ones that did we put it on the other side here just a different style connector for what we went with so on this one you just get and kind of use your fingernail that's going to lift it up so that way it kind of flaps up like that and then you just pull straight out just like so and now that connector is free so um, again just to uh, and that's really all it is and then you just able to take your original board out put your new board in so set so the original back to the side here. I'll go ahead and uh, we're going to reinstall this just so you guys can see how that works. So again, we're just going to slot this in here like that. Just hardly any pressure at all. Again, these are pretty fragile connector connectors, but you just push them in like that. Kind of push that clip down like so. We're going to fold it back in to the housing, kind of like this. And um, you can see here, you want to kind of make sure that you're lining up the, uh, on the side, make sure you're kind of lining up the, uh, those TRS or those 3.5 millimeter jacks with the holes on the radio. Um, but coming back up to the top here, you can just kind of tell by, get on that side there, you can just tell by um, where those are going in. So. Again, we're just going to do is kind of very gently get the top view on it. There you go. Um, again, we're just going to kind of very gently push that in so the screw holes get lined up. All right. So now we'll do is we'll uh, grab our three screws that hold this uh, board back into place. So. Um, I usually like to put the middle one in first, kind of leave it in a little bit loose, and then put the other three in, and then uh, tighten them all back down so that way you know you're getting it back into the right spot. And um, these screws do come with little uh, washer and then a lock washer on them, so make sure you don't lose those. Probably not necessarily critical if uh, they do fly away, but uh, better to hang on to them, of course. So we'll just uh, tighten these down. Yeah, just want them snug. Don't need to. Don't need to go crazy with them. You're not going to be. You know, this isn't the lug nuts on your car. It's a, you know, it's a radio. So be a little bit gentle, but just nice and snug on them, just so it doesn't go anywhere when you're plugging things in. 
get verify our connectors are still tight on the um, going to the display. But uh, from here, we can do is just put our screen back down. Now we have these little um, they have these little tabs on the screen that the holes go into. So we're just going to make sure that we get those lined up correctly, and we can just slot it right back in like that. And then I usually like to do is actually put these uh, top and bottom ones in first just to help guide it and hold it into place as we're reassembling it. So you might have to push it down just a little bit to get it started. Same deal, I just get it started, don't necessarily tighten it all the way yet, but it's up to you. Put it back here. around do each of the four corners So we got our four screws in here, 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 and here, and then the two on the top. We'll go back and retighten those. All right. Now what we gotta do is just put our battery back in place, and then uh, turn the radio on. Um, one thing, if uh, you've got a short on that wire or something like that. You might have a situation where the radio will turn on and it may start transmitting right away. You can tell because the TX light will turn red. Uh, in that case, just disconnect the battery right away and go back in and uh, uh, double check your connections on, especially on that little ZIF cable there that uh, it's connected up here. But um, otherwise, um, well, again, pretty simple replacement. Uh, takes most people less than 15 minutes to do. All you need is a Phillips screwdriver, nothing, no crazy Torx bits or Y bits or anything like that. And uh, what we'll do actually is uh, go ahead and test it out. I just have my MacBook charger here. Um, we'll just plug a Type C cable into it and uh, open up our little uh, flap, plug it in, see that it goes in. And if we turn the radio off here, we can see that uh, we get the orange light that's charging. Um, again, it's just a connector swap on this. It's not like we're adding USB-C power delivery standard. Um, we do have obviously the correct resistors to make sure that even if you plug it into a 20 volt charger like this, it sends the correct five volt, uh, at, I think it's like uh, uh, 1.5 amps or something of that nature. Um, so no, the charger knows what kind of power to send to it. Um, but it does, again, it still charges at the original kind of you know, five, seven watt um, charging speed that the um, original board is capable of. So, but again, this way you don't have to have a micro USB cable around just for your ICOM anymore. You can use any type C cable that you got with your computer or your phone or what have you. And uh, again, you do get that um, extra protection, which is the main reason I redesigned this. Um, you get that extra protection for the uh, uh, amplifier line so that way you can use basically all 12 volt amplifiers shouldn't have an issue connecting to this again with just uh i got this cable here at walmart just uh, one that goes from the 3.5 to the rca is uh, what my particular one uses but um again, none of the stock functionality of the board is affected um the cw key still works the alc line still works the same um the tuner line works the same. I was able to test all those and uh, said, should just uh, make this more convenient for you. That way you don't have to again, have that type C cable. So I uh, hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, thank you for considering your purchase. And uh, say 73, this has been 89LJ.